assalamu alaikum in this lecture we are going to study about the medium transmission line and the first model that we will be discussing is the end condenser model uh, starting from the basic information about the medium transmission line modeling as in the medium transmission line the voltage value is larger than the short transmission line and the distances that it has to cover is also longer than the shorter transmission lines so therefore we cannot neglect the capacitance so capacitance cannot be neglected because as the length of the line increases the effect of capacitance cannot be neglected right so in the end condenser method we have to consider the capacitance but where should we put that capacitance so in this method we will put it in parallel with the load so at the end of the transmission line we are considering the capacitance in parallel with the load at the end of the transmission line so one thing to consider is that as we already know that the capacitance is distributed in the transmission line as it is distributed so we have to use a capacitance value after every per unit length which is usually kilometer so after every kilometer of the transmission line we should use a capacitance in the model but we use the lumped parameters which means that each transmission line whatever the length of it is uh, for the medium transmission line case we will use one entity for the resistance one element for the resistance one element for the uh, inductance of the line and one element for the capacitance so we actually want to calculate the parameters of this circuit which are sending and voltage current uh, receiving and voltage and if uh, it is if the value of uh, the electrical parameters is not exceeding a certain error value then we can assume that uh, the model is almost perfect right but in this case in this end condenser method uh, we usually have error in calculation which can go more than 10% So therefore, uh, in comparison to other uh, models of the medium transmission line, which are pi and t models, the error in the end condenser method is a little bit larger. And there is a reason for that because the capacitance is actually distributed in the transmission lines. And as the length of the line increases, the capacitance should be considered in a distributed way. But in this end condenser method, we are considering this capacitance at the end of the line. So if it is distributed after every kilometer, for example, then there will be a current IC1, IC2 that is flowing through the capacitance that is distributed over the line length. So the current that is passing through the series part of the model, that is actually the resistance, is reducing over the length of the line so there is a certain portion of current that is moving from sending end to receiving end that is actually passing through the capacitance that is in the shunt branch but in the model we have considered only one capacitance that is at the end of the line so if it is at the end of the line then the whole current is passing through the resistance and reactance so this charging current that should be reduced from the actual current that is passing through the resistance is actually not neglected so if it is not neglected then the error in the cal calculation is increased therefore in the longer medium transmission line if the end condenser method is used then the error can go up to 10 percent and therefore why we actually prefer that we should use pi or t model in the modeling of medium transmission lines right so this is the model of end condenser medium transmission line so this error in the line calculation can be reduced if we will switch to the distributed parameters rather than the 
lumped parameters because in n condenser method the line capacitance is overestimated what we are doing we are actually overestimating the effect of line capacitance now if we have to draw the phasor diagram for this particular medium line model first we have to define a reference which is vr and then the current the load current that is ir which is actually lagging and then there is a capacitor in parallel with the load so that will be this ic because ic is usually calculated j omega c v r we are using this receiving and voltage because this capacitor is in parallel with the load so this j will add 90 degree angle to the current and in order to calculate the sending and voltage that will be equal to is is equal to ic plus is so therefore sorry i r so therefore this is calculation should have the addition of IR phasor as well as IC phasor. So IS is equal to IC plus IR. And we know that IC is equal to J omega C V R. IC is equal to the voltage across the capacitance divided by the capacitive reactance. And the capacitive reactance is 1 over omega C. We will take omega C in the numerator and IC is equal to J omega C V R. Similarly, if we have to calculate the sending and voltage, that will be equal to V S V R plus I S into Z. And this is the impedance of the line. And impedance is actually the summation of these two elements. Z is equal to R plus J X L. So this is the brief discussion about the end condenser method of representing a medium transmission line. Now we will solve a question related to a single phase medium transmission line. And in this question, we have a line whose length is 100 kilometer and the resistance per kilometer is this, the reactance per kilometer is this value. Susceptance is 1, 4 into 10 raised to minus 6 Siemens. This is this part. Admittance per meter because admittance is actually equal to conductance plus JB. And this B value is susceptance. Right? So if you have to calculate admittance, then you just have to add J here and multiply it with the length of the line, which is 100. So this is your susceptance. So this value is actually B. So in order to calculate the admittance per kilometer you just have to put a j before the value the numerical value similarly the receiving and voltage is 66 kilo volt and we are assuming that the total capacitance of the line is local localized at the receiving end so it is an end condenser method determine the sending end current so we will be calculating the is first and is is equal to ir plus I C. So I S is equal to the summation of these two currents. In order to calculate this I R, we should know the load of the line that is 15,000 kilo volt. So it will be P delivered with the load power divided by V R cos phi R. And the load is receiving power at point 8 lagging power factor. So this, therefore, this is 0.8. Vr value is 66k, and delivered power is 15,000 kilowatt. So the current value will be 284 ampere at the receiving end, and the angle with the current will be minus cos inverse 0.8. This negative sign is because of the lagging current. So it will be minus 36.87. This is 
this is the magnitude of the current and this is the angle of uh, the current with the reference value which is vr now it, in order to calculate ic we should know two quantities one is ir which is this value and the second one is ic which is equal to j omega c into vr and this is j14 into 10 raised to minus 4 into 66 k so this is the voltage value and this is the susceptance value that is given in the question so this is 1 4 into 10 raised to minus 6 then if you will multiply it with 100 you will get 10 raised to minus 4 so the IC value is 92 J or you can also write it as 92 angle 90 degree so if you will add this value IC with IR you will get the value of IS which is equal to 284 angle minus 36.87 plus 92 angle 90 degree so this will be the 240 ampere angle minus 18.96 now the second part of the question is you have to calculate the sending and voltage and from the equation we know that vs is equal to vr plus is into impedance so this is your vr so whatever the voltage at this point plus the voltage drop in the transmission line so vr is 66k is we know that from the previous calculation is equal to 240 angle minus 18.96 and impedance is r plus j xl that is in the question multiplied by 100 resistance is 0.25 reactance is 0.8 ohms and you will multiply it with 100 so you will get the value of voltage which will be equal to 79583 volt angle 11.50 so this is your sending end voltage the third part of the question is that you have to calculate the voltage regulation and percentage voltage regulation in this case also will be equal to vs magnitude minus vr magnitude over vs we know the magnitude of both the voltages and that will be 79583 minus 66k divided by 66k into 100 so the percentage voltage regulation will be equal to 20 0.58 percent sorry you should have vr here you can either use vs or vr in this formula in the denominator but if you are using vr then it will be giving you the voltage drop of the line so there is 20 percent voltage drop in the line right but if you will use vs here then it will give you the remaining voltage at the receiving end or the voltage that you are getting at the receiving end in percentage so you can use either of these voltage values either vr or vs in the denominator but you should know that how to interpret the results that you are getting you have calculated the regulation now you have to calculate the supply power factor so supply power factor is cos theta s right so if you remember the phasor diagram that I have made in the previous slide this is your VR which is the reference value then there is current IS here and there is another current that is IR and then VS is leading VR so in order to calculate this theta IS I have to calculate the angle between VS and IS which is this one so if we know this theta which is theta 1 and this theta this is theta 2 then theta s will be equal to theta 1 plus theta 2 and theta 1 is the angle between vs and vr theta 2 is the angle between vr and is right so when we calculated the voltage value of uh, sending n we have an angle here which is 11.50 
so this angle is actually theta 1 so every quantity is being measured with reference to some voltage value which is the receiving end voltage in this case so theta 1 is 11.50 and then when we calculated the is value we got the angle equal to 18.96 but the angle was minus 18.96 right why it was negative because it is in the clockwise direction so therefore it the angle was negative so the actual angle between vr and v is 18.96 so in order to calculate theta s which is the angle between vs and is theta s is equal to 30.46 so you have to add theta 1 which is the angle between vs and vr and theta 2 which is the angle between vr and is so you have to add these two angles so this is the angle between the sending and voltage and the sending and current so you can easily find the sending and power factor by using this formula right so this was a simple example of a single phase medium transmission line that you can apply for solving the questions related to transmission line model of end condenser method thank you